Howdy Patreon subscribers and Tinker Nerds. As promised, my next video tutorial is gonna be a Raspberry Pi supercomputer. Now in all honesty, it's gonna be a Raspberry Pi cluster computer because I don't really have enough Raspberry Pis to make a supercomputer. But using the same principle, you could, if you could afford it, make a Raspberry Pi supercomputer. So what I'm gonna do that's different than my other tutorials is I'm gonna show you step by step uh, what I am doing to make this happen and we will start by the parts that you need because I haven't put anything else together yet So here's what we're gonna start with First off, obviously you need some Raspberry Pis. I have purchased four Raspberry Pis to use for this project and um, what you'll need to go along with these is some SD cards to uh, store the operating system on. I'm going to be putting Raspbian on these Raspberry Pis. And also, you're going to need a way to power them. So I have these nice little elastic USB cables. Uh, not really elastic, but you see what I mean. They're pretty cool. Saves on space. And um, also, since you don't want to have power adapters for all those, because it will be quite messy, I have a little USB hub here so that I can plug them all in at once and only use one power adapter. Now you're also going to need a way to network all of these Raspberry Pis together. You could use some wireless cards, but that's just going to add to the expense and it's going to be kind of more difficult to set everything up. So what I have here is some Ethernet cables that I'm going to plug the Raspberry Pis into. And then I have its own devoted router that I'm going to plug the other end of the cables into. Now this will give the Raspberry Pis their own separate network that uh, uh, will avoid conflict with any other networks and any other IP addresses that I may have. So basically that's everything that you're gonna need to get started. I may add some things along the line if I need to, but for the most part, that should be it. So the next step is to start burning the Raspbian OS to the SD cards, cause that's probably gonna take a while. And here's how you can do that. For all of you Windows users out there, here's how you can burn the Raspbian image to an SD card. The first thing that you wanna do is uh, insert your blank SD card. If it's not blank, then just be aware everything on it is going to be erased. So after you do that, you want to download the uh, Raspbian image, which you can find at raspberrypi.org slash downloads from this location. Um, and um, here is the Raspbian image. There's a lot of other images that you can install, but this is going to be the one that I'm going to be working with for this project. The next thing that you want to download is the Win32 Disk Imager, which you can find at sourceforge.net slash project slash Win32 Disk Imager. And this is going to allow us to burn the image to an SD card. So I already have these downloaded. So what I'm going to do is open up the uh, Win32 Disk Imager program. You want to make sure your SD card is selected. Mine is drive G, so I know that that's correct. And then you want to um, point it to the image that you downloaded, which is right here. And for some reason, that minimizes the program every time I do this. And then you just want to click right and it will give you this error, but if you click yes, then it's going to go ahead and start writing the image to your SD card. Whenever it's done, you can plug it into your Raspberry Pi and you're good to go. If you're on a Mac, here's how you can burn the Raspbian image to your SD card. First of all, make sure the SD card is indeed inserted into your computer and you want to type in DF minus H and this will bring up all the different file paths for your uh, mounted drives. So I know that my SD card is named boot. So if I find boot on here under volumes boot, it'll give me the file path uh, for that mounted drive, which in this case is disk one S one. 
And if you're not sure of what the name of your SD card is, if you open up the disk utility, you can find where your SD card is mounted, and then it will tell you the name of it. So um, that being said, since we're in the disk utility, uh, you can go ahead and click boot uh, or whatever the name of your SD card is. Make sure it's not the SD card itself, and but make sure that's selected and click unmount. Um, and this will allow us to be able to write to it without any errors. So bringing back up the command line, here is the uh, command for um, burning the image to your SD card. Oh, by the way, make sure that you have the image downloaded from raspberrypi.org slash downloads and download the Raspbian uh, uh, version of the images. So what you want to do is um, this is going to be a sudo command uh, and then dd if equals and then type in the path to where you downloaded uh, your Raspbian image, which in my case is the downloads folder. Uh, and the name of the image is 2014-01-07-wheezy-raspbian.img. And then um, you want to type in the path of the SD card which is slash dev slash disk one in my case. Um, you don't have to worry about the S1 or S numbers or whatever just put in disk one or whatever the name of your SD card path is. And then BS equals 4M and hit enter it'll prompt you for your password and then it'll just uh, process until it's done and this could take up to an hour depending on the speed of your computer. Alright well that's it for burning an image to an SD card on a Mac. Alright guys I hope you enjoyed part one. I'm going to keep you all updated as I progress through this project so stay tuned for more videos like this one. Also let me know what you think about this video and if you are interested in becoming a Patreon subscriber you can click here to find out more. Alright guys, see you all next time.